Hey folks, welcome to another edition of the Practical Tactical Podcast. This is the podcast dedicated to the practical application of tactical principles and teachings for the everyday common person. I'm your host, Casey. We've got Justin with us. Justin, how are you, my friend? Good evening. I'm actually doing pretty good. Just got back from another match. Did good. Outshot some people with my uh, little baby Glock. Well, I'm not the troop. The, the Glock 26. Sorry, it's not the baby anymore, I guess. Um, out, outshot some guys with some 34s with my 26. So, uh, it was good times, good times. And I got a guy from uh, a coworker to go with me. He shot his first match. He did really good. So, uh, it was, it was fun. Good, 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 good. It is, uh, very cold out here. I think it was like 20 degrees was the high today. Uh, not really happy about that. <laughs> think I need to move further south. This is really not working out for me. Uh, extremely busy as per the normal. Um, you'll recall a few weeks ago I talked about how uh, Slappy over there wrecked my truck. <laughs> got uh, got him a new car this week so he can start repaying me. And uh, other than that, it's been kind of situation normal. Busy, busy, busy. But what are we going to talk about today, Justin? Well, we got a couple things on tap. Uh, two main ones. We're going to talk about gun guy advice. This is kind uh, of... <laughs> is, this, is this a rehash? It's kind of a rehash of a previous one that we mentioned, and uh, we're also going to talk about some new SHOT Show developments, but as you guys will recall, uh, we had an episode called Gun Experts Recommend or whatever, and we talked about this. This is kind of like a part two or a more detailed look at a couple... Um, people in the industry made some recommendations, and then we'll we'll go over some uh, stuff we like, dislike, interesting, whatever stuff that's popped up at Chot Show. So that's basically it. You ready? Let's get it on. <laughs> All right. Starting off, although the advertisement in the upper right looks good, this guy from the Shooters, Shooters Log, it's actually posted on CheaperThanDirt.com. It's a decent article, and I like where he starts off with, you know, oh, everybody's unique. And once again, and I think we have to say this, and I'm, I know Casey feels the same way. We are not disparaging any of these individuals um, personally. Um, I'm not saying this guy, let's say Bob Campbell, is a bad dude. I simply have a difference of opinion. And I think some of these people, their opinions are kind of irresponsible when you apply them to the average person that's probably reading it. So, but it's nothing personal against them. They can carry what they want to carry. I don't care. But as good advice for the everyday common person, as we say, I have a, a different of a difference in opinion. So I now I got the disclaimer out of the way. So uh, this And yes, I, I agree. I agree with you 100%. We're not trying to disparage anybody. But as Justin said, our recommendations come from a position of using our weapons for self-defense or in a duty capacity. We look for reliability and cost and things like that. So uh, just our opinions. Uh, none of the guns we're going to talk about, and, and we'll talk about several. Uh, I like them all. I just don't necessarily want to use them to defend my life. Uh, so that's kind of where we're coming from. So, yeah, good good disclaimer, Justin. Okay. want to be fair because I'm – don't want to get personal with anybody. All right, this gentleman recommends, it comes down to it once you read to he recommends three different guns. A 1911, a Browning High Power, and a CZ-75. Granted, in their day, two out of the three of those guns were the bee's knees. I mean, the best going. Especially the high, uh, first the 1911 and then that the high, the high Power. And now, the CZs are really taking a foothold in competitions. Um, but still... Two big issues with them. One, we're going to be focusing a lot about cost on this episode. That's something I'm, we didn't highlight in the previous episode. We kind of mentioned on it, but this actually has dollars and cents where you can go somewhere and buy this within probably $20 to $50 uh, 
you have a price here to try to give a little bit of perspective. So first off, Browning High Power, good luck finding one of those for less than eight, nine hundred bucks. And also with the CZ, you're looking at all oh, reasonable duty weapon prices on the on the entry level. But let's be honest, you're not <laughs> you're not gonna buy the cheapest CZ. Everybody wants at least a moderate customized model so you're still looking at probably about a thousand dollars and lastly the 1911 yes you might be able to find a new gi kind of model for five or six hundred dollars but let's also be honest you don't want your thumb chewed off and you probably want some resemblance of sights so what you really want to spend is at least probably a thousand dollars while you lust over a three thousand plus dollar gun that you know is what you really want. So all of these weapons, not only do they almost all cost more than most average polymer service pistols, they all weigh more. And the 1911, serious capacity issue, not to mention reliability issues with certain kinds of magazines, certain kind of ammunition. You know, this gun doesn't, like this kind of magazine with these kind of hollow points or the, I mean, all kinds of nonsense. And I think, I think you said it once, Casey, it's a connoisseur's gun, but for the average everyday common man, I don't think either one of those are really good recommendations. What do you think, Casey? Well, so let's, let's talk about the 1911 and the Browning, both of which are, are John Moses Browning designs, great guns. Here's the issue. Um, they're heavier, far more expensive, and generally hold less ammo than a Glock 17, even a Glock 19. So I guess my question is why? Again, I'm not against them. Not against them in the least. If I am not well-versed on the Browning High Power, I do know that it's seen service in some very specialized units in uh, various militaries around the world, uh, as has the 1911. They're not being used today. That's what we call a clue. Because there's better things out there. And better is such a subjective term. But let's back up. So if we look at the 500... Let's go back to the, to the Browning. I'm sure you can get them relatively cheap. I see that at, today at SHOT Show in 2016, Nighthawk Customs, uh, which is a 1911 custom build house has released a Browning High Power. Awesome. I'm sure it's going to be about three grand like the rest of their 1911s. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. At that level, that gun is going to probably run like a raped-ass ape. Okay? As will their 1911. So, buy-in, initial buy-in on a Browning High Power is expensive. What about sights? Does it take 1911 sights? Does it take something else? I don't know. So, sights could be an issue. Magazines could be an issue. Support gear such as holsters could be an issue. So the Browning High Power is another gun that I relegate to kind of the aficionado's gun. Great gun. Beautiful gun. Well shooting. They have some of the best, I'm sure, that you can buy anywhere uh, for the right money. Let's go to the 1911. $500 1911. Uh, it's not going to run. It's It's likely going to give you issues either in... Type of magazine? Does it need the Chip McCormick Power Mag? Does it need uh, a trip? Does it does it like Wilson 47Ds? There's so many different things that go on with the 1911, especially a lower end one, that could be an issue. And let's be honest, the issues that plague a lower end 1911 are just as likely to plague a high end 1911. So, taking the $500 base, which is basically what you're buying is for a Glock of any flavor. Uh, you're not going to have user-replaceable sights. The sights are going to be just really, uh, sure, they're there and they, they work-ish, but they're nothing you're going to want to fight with. The grip safety is going to want to be redone because that's what everybody does with a 1911. That Very few people keep the, the grip safety the same and the, and the mainspring housing the same. The safety is going to want to be redone. So we're going to end up spending a bunch of money to fix on a gun that we paid 500 bucks for. That may or may not work well to begin with. Again, I'm a, I love 1911s. I, I've had several. I've got one now that is actually probably a, a $500 gun. 
Uh, you'll note that I have it. I don't shoot it a lot, and I certainly don't carry it to defend my life with. Uh, it's a toy gun. It's a plinker. And I love plinkers. Nobody loves plinkers more than me. The difference is I'm not so much a collector anymore. I used to have 50 handguns and 13 different types of ARs and all this other stuff. I don't have it anymore. You know why? Because I don't need it. It's just having stuff doesn't do it for me anymore. I want guns that I can pick up and run like scalded dogs. So that's what I've chosen to focus my efforts on. I have nothing against a very nice gun, uh, the barbecue gun, as it were. Hell, I took a uh, $1,200 when I bought it back in the day. Uh, what was it? A Springfield MC operator. Beautiful gun. was a great gun out of the box. And I went ahead and I put like $3,000 in it to make it a more custom gun uh, because it just wasn't good enough. So here I am with a $4,500 piece. Beautiful gun. In fact, <laughs> all my buddies and I, we called it the Reagan. The USS Reagan, because that's it cost as much as a damn aircraft carrier. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, uh, a great gun. Loved it. Uh, I've sold it. I, I no longer have it. I, I do regret selling it. I will be honest. I wish I still had that gun. And I do have first right of refusal from the guy who bought it that if and when he decides to sell, I get first dibs. But it's just, it's not a practical gun. It's heavy. It carries like eight rounds, really. Again, good gun, don't get me wrong. Just not something I want to carry. And to be honest, if we're going to get into the duty type of carry gun, you're looking at a $3,000 Wilson. That's just the bottom line. Unless you're, unless you, I'm not carrying anything that's not that. And, and, and now the Wilson CQB, again, great production gun. But even those have problems on occasion. Why? Because it's a 1911. I don't know why. There's so many things that can happen. So, and they're so expensive to shoot. And forty five is not cheap. Yeah, and then so, they, and they have nine mils. But why were you gonna have a reduced why? cast of beans? Why would I do that? Yeah, I, I'm not against it. Again, ha get what floats your boat. I'm not gonna give you the advice you want to hear. I'm gonna give you the advice you need to hear, which is, and we'll get into the the numbers here shortly. But just. Be sensible with your money. You want something reliable, something you can support, something that's easy to fix. Or hell, for 500 bucks, if I blow the gun up, you know what I do? I run down to the gun store and I buy another one. That's it. Job done. Any gun store on the corner, I go get a Glock 17. And we're talking about, we're not saying don't ever own one of these guns. We're saying this doesn't right. make sense for your first gun. Or if you're only going to have one gun. Or if you're, that, that's what, we're talking about the first priority, which is the gun like you said, for your defense, duty or carry, or for the house or whatever, that gun, not the gun that you play with, not the gun that you get for special occasions. And um, oh, Correct. There's one thing I want to touch on. You, I don't know who told me about this, but let's remember why many of those upper-tier um, special people that have all the money and bullets you could ever want shoot until they can't stand shooting anymore – why they don't use these weapons for all the reasons i mentioned yeah because even then with all their resources they were having trouble having their custom made personally tuned 1911 is making it all the way through one of their courses and these guys have unlimited resources their own in-house armors they could they could build anything they want and they still couldn't build a gun on that platform that could run all the way through their course without problems and having to be tuned up versus just a box stock, basically Glock. So <laughs> that's that's why they're using what they're using. Well, while we're on the subject of 1911s, uh, CMP, the Civilian Marksmanship Program, they're the guys out of Alabama. I think it's uh, Anniston. I don't remember the Redstone Arsenal maybe. That you get the old military surplus guns you can get like uh m1a's and m14s and all that other stuff uh out of that program for pretty reasonable uh they have varying grades of of um you know prettiness and things like that and the guns range from i don't know what to you know a couple grand a piece for a uh for like a really nice m1a or whatever they have recently been authorized to sell 
surplus 1911s. Uh, so they're still waiting on all of the ins and outs of how to do that and things like that, you know, because the handgun's got to go to an FFL and all this other stuff. But just today I saw an e- a link uh, that we will have in the show notes that basically is saying, hey, f- you can get a, a real world official 19. 19- 13 issued 1911 for about a thousand bucks. It's going to cost you about a thousand bucks. And again, I'm not saying don't buy those. That's not what I'm saying. I will probably try to figure out a way to save my pennies so that I can have one. If you all would like to donate, let us know. We've got a <laughs> PayPal account you can help with. Uh, but so even even an old old gun, old Millsurp gun is going is is very expensive. So it's just something to be aware of. Really, more than anything, it's something to be aware of that they're they're not cheap. Like, look at here, nineteen oh three, uh, fourteen hundred fifty bucks. You got a scroll down, Justin. I guess that's all they've got in right now. Yeah, they're not real forthcoming with all the prices on all yeah. that, but it's definitely you're not going to get a rock bottom deal on these. But you're also getting a piece of kind of a piece of history, I guess you could say. Yeah, and they're cool. I mean, I'm not against them. Like I said, I just think yeah, 80 or 90% solutions is what we like to talk about here. There's a lot of sexy stuff out there. There's a lot of really cool stuff out there. And, you know, feel free. Explore. Your first gun probably shouldn't be a thirteen or $3,000 1911. Just like your first Harley should probably not be an Ultra Classic. It you should be a saying? Honda Shadow for yeah. 1800 so, bucks. <laughs> yeah. Something it gets you to A to B or whatever, but uh, and that eighteen hundred dollar Honda Shadow that Justin rides versus my really expensive Ultra Classic, uh, they're they're going the same place. They get you both the same place. Some of them a little more comfort, a little more style and panache, which I'm a big fan of. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> panache, Google it. And here's a free tip: if you put hard saddlebags on and you happen to lay it over accidentally. That'll save the tailpipe. Just saying. Did you did you lay your bike over? I've laid my bike over twice. And what? It, it both times. Once was in my garage, and once was out here in front of my house, just walking it back. And for some reason, it started to go. And I don't just real carefully the, laid it on its side. <laughs> I'm like, what the? But both I had saddlebags on it, and it just hit the saddlebag and stopped. So I, well, I, I'll be honest, since we're being honest here on the show live, you see it's live-ish, uh, I, I used to have a Sportster, and I dumped that bike twice, both times, uh, slow speed, in the gravel, and uh, I've, dumped, I've dumped the big bike, the Ultra Classic, one time, uh, this, is so, this was so embarrassing, I wanted to just die, so the wife and I, so I got the Ultra because... I was always riding a bike. I had this little 883 Sportster. I put about 13 and a half, 14,000 miles on it in two years, which is a lot of miles for a Sportster for any of you motorcycle guys. If you're not a motorcycle guy, you can go ahead and fast forward about two minutes and uh, we'll <laughs> back to the gun shit. But anyway, so I put like 14,000 miles in a couple of years on that, uh, on that Sportster 883, rode it from, uh, I, you know, a couple of several large trips, trips that you don't take an 883 Sportster on, you know, like thousand mile one way trips, uh, Anyway, great bike. So I, I wanted to upgrade because, one, the 883 really sucks for the type of riding I like to do, which is long distance. And two, uh, it sucks on the freeway because an 883 only goes so fast uh, at the end of the day. So, and my wife, she's always like, I, I want to go out and ride on the bike. Listen, you're not riding on the back of an 883. It's just, you know, we are people-sized people. We're not little models. So... And it wasn't going to happen. So I got this Ultra Classic. I got a good deal on it. And we took a big trip, went up to uh, the family farm in North Dakota this last summer. And uh, it was a great trip. The wife and I, we rode up on the bike. She's, I'll never forget, she's like, uh, I said, we're going to ride up. And she's like, well, where are we going to put all our stuff? I'm like, well, fuck, we got, I'm sorry, we got two saddlebags. Where else, I mean, what do you mean, where are we going to put our stuff? It's got a trunk too. What are you, are you kidding me? I got more room on this thing than I got in my patrol car. <laughs> so we made it. Uh, she, I said, you get a saddlebag. You know, make it work for two weeks. Suck it up, Buttercup. I can fit all my shit. You can fit yours. I mean, really, what do you need? Take a couple pairs of jeans, some some uh, uh, 
t-shirts and, and some sandals and you'll be good to go. Anyway, so it worked. Uh, we almost died only one time. I never laid the bike down, thank God. But uh, caught some really bad rain in St. Louis and I about like to die. Anyway, long story, it was good. So this past fall, just a, a few months ago, we're out riding. We, we, that's, our, that's our weekend thing. We like to go ride because uh, you know, you're, already, you're paying for the bike, so that's, you got a lot of money invested there. Uh, but it's, a cheap, it's cheap entertainment at the end of the day. So I stop at this, at this light. And, I, and now I'm a shorter statured fellow, for those of you who don't know me, which is well, most of you. And so I'm on the balls of my feet when I, when I stop on a bike. I'm not flat-footed. And I come to a stop at, at the stop, stoplight that we've stopped at 75 billion times. Uh, and it is just ever so slightly angled to the left. So it's lower on the left than it is on the right. It's kind of, it's like on one of those goofy ass, like up a hill thing. But it's, it's not quite level, but it's not real bad. Anyway, next thing I know, so I stop. Thank God it was like early Saturday morning. I don't know. I didn't, I don't know. I woke up early. I said, hey, let's get on the bike. So, thank God there was only like three cars that saw this happen. So, I pull up and stop and put my feet down, just like I always do. And I swear to God, an 800-pound Harley Davidson Ultra Classic is heavy as shit when it decides it wants to lay down and take a nap. (laughs) With your old lady on the back. So, it starts to go. And I'm like, oh! And I'm like, Kelly, Jesus Christ! It looks like there's anything she can do. So I've got my foot down. So anyway, so it just kind of lays over and takes a nap. And uh, I, let me tell you, adrenaline from embarrassment and, oh, my God, did I just wreck my bike, will le- let you pick up an 800-pound bike pretty quickly, too. Uh, so it, it all happened very quickly. was over with. We were back on the bike. And again, no big deal. Thank God. N- did no, no damage to the bike. But, uh, yeah, I don't really know where I was going with that story, but uh, I love motorcycling. So if you want to talk about motorcycles, feel free to do that on the uh on the on the facebook there but uh yeah so much like you don't buy a very expensive very large uh, v twin or like a hayabusa if you're into the whole crotch rocket thing i just like the way you say it hayabusa hayabusa is that not how you say it no it is oh okay so shut your face hole (laughs) so you don't buy you don't buy one of these really big things and really expensive things straight away you get to learn start off on some yeah yeah and I think that uh, you should probably do that with your guns. I don't know if that would, I don't know if I really made the connection there, but I enjoyed talking about the motorcycle story. So moving on, I guess. <laughs> oh boy! Next show we'll talk about how I, for some reason, cannot stay on a jet ski with my lady friend without rolling over. But <laughs> where has she been, by the way? <laughs> she was supposed New, to start doing like girl uh, shows. I know. New- what happened? She got a new job, moved, and is she's finally settled in, but she's kind of stressed out. She she had it really good where she was at, kind of got comfortable in the routine. Now she's got a high intensity new boss and new kids and new challenges, and she's getting she's kind of consumed now, by right? it. But yeah, she is. Not not really a whole lot. Oh, 10, 15 minutes closer, but. Anyways, anyway, moving on. See, this, this, <laughs> this is, is what uh, get sidetracked. This is what really brought on this episode. Um, a particular person put up that this is the best handgun ever. This being a <laughs> Smith and Wesson six eighty six three fifty seven revolver. Yes. Now, all the problems with revolvers aside, that everyone seems to forget about. Um, I'll cover that real quickly because I'm not an expert on it, but there's timing, is- timing issues. Uh, there, there's all these things that we've, we have this nostalgic relationship with things. It's like, it's kind of like fashion. You look at these weird boots, you're like, what is that? And like, oh, go back 10 years. You'll see it again. It's like old things are new when you forget about them and you rediscover them. So I'm. Um, I don't get how people say, oh, well, well, they're heavy and that's good and they're reliable. And I'm, I, I, they normally have more moving parts that you can't get to, that you can't address. Low capacity, I don't get it, but whatever. 
So this yeah, is, they're generally not as easy to shoot. There's yeah. trigger the trigger can be problematic for some shooters. Uh, again, low capacity, they're heavy, and I'm again I'm not particularly anti revolver, mind you. I'm a big fan. Uh, I love a, a, a 38 snubby as a backup gun or even as a pocket gun if it's you know the only thing I've got running to grab a six pack of beer or something up to the gas station. But uh, and I would like a, a, a Smith & Wesson. I can't remember the model number. It might be a 686 and 45. I don't know. It's the uh, the Jerry Michalik special one. It's the, the I think it's the 7-round 45 caliber. Anyway, I'd really like one of those. Not enough to actually go out and buy one right now because, they, they're again, they're expensive. So if you like the PayPal address, let us know. Um, but they're just I, – I, I just – I've – don't see the need, and I just don't see how you get a lot of people who recommend a revolver for new shooters, and I just don't know that that's always the best option. Well, and one thing I don't remember where this guy lives. If he lives up north, where north where he's facing bears on a regular occasion, okay, maybe I can see that. But for the now, ad- listen, I, I lived in Alaska. Yeah, I I, I worked in Alaska for like. Oh, I years. forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, I didn't roll a big ass revolver. It just wasn't for me. Uh, I, I usually rolled a, a rifle, more more specifically a Marlin 4570 rifle. Or what about the 10 a millimeter? Gun. Why do these people always, they want a big, honking, fast, heavy round, but they totally forget about the 10 millimeter that's, that you can get in a service weapon, high capacity? Uh, well, it, it's and up there, and again, it's, it's, I get it up there, but your primary threat is not of the two-legged variety. Yeah, it's you're, that's not a human issue gun. It really, it's just a poor performer for that. And it just it is what it is. And the three fifty seven is still a bare bare minimum in that classification of dangerous game. It's it's kind of like don't kind of like kind of like rolling with a three eighty yeah. versus two legged guys. Yeah, it's okay. It's better than nothing, but it's anyways. In his recommendation, he he touts it as the best gun. As in, you only have one gun, you get this gun. I'm sorry, buddy. That is bad advice. That's awful yeah. advice. So, not only does this gentleman say this, he then goes, and I think he's going to redeem himself, but he doesn't. Mm-hmm. He digs the hole further. YouTube screws <laughs> me again. <laughs> the best handgun for all these situations. So, he comes up with all these hypothetical situations. He says, oh. Are any of them involving having to shoot a guy who's trying to kill you? Yes. Okay. I think that's where he picked the $1,500 custom target 9mm SIG that weighs as much as a boat. The and, SIG TAC Pro or whatever, cost, which is a badass gun, by the way. Yeah, and costs almost as much as my motorcycle. Or for a carry gun, he picked the compact Beretta 90 something G Wilson Combat spec'd out that cost over $1,000. Which, again. Badass gun, I want one. Yes. But, yeah. Or these other revolvers. I mean, we're talking about six grand worth of guns that this gentleman just laid down on the table. I don't think I have six grand in guns anymore. Like, total. Uh, like, all all it. in. All in. Ammo, holsters, rifles, magazines. I don't pay retail, so I'm sure I don't have six grand in, in all that anymore. I don't know. I have to think Maybe. about it. I don't know. I've definitely spent six grand on guns. Oh God! <laughs> I've spent six grand in a day before when we were working overseas. Yeah. Had more money than God, and we weren't paying attention with anyway. Anyways, and then he ends it with what he carries every day, which is a Chiapo Rhino, which costs about seven hundred dollars. Now I've never fooled with one of those, but I'm looking at it. It just doesn't look like it would be. I just why. What's, what caliber is that? Three, it's, it's 357. It's a five shot. The thing is, the barrel's on the bottom. So huh. the, the recoil is more into your hand, supposedly lighter recoiling. Um, I think they have decent triggers. Um, I, I would fool with one. I, I just haven't. I've just, it's, again, it's just not one of those things I've messed with. But of all the things I could carry, I mean, that thing looks pretty big in his hand. Like, I mean, it looks really big in his hand. And I mean, Glock 17 is pretty good size. Got a lot of bullets. I don't know. So, just for comparison's sake, here is an average kind of loadout. I've carried this at one time. I don't. I don't carry it now. But this is a good recommendation. You have a 
Smith and Wesson shield, about four hundred bucks, four four fifty. You got a spare magazine, comes with it. You got a holster, a quality holster, about eighty dollars. Let's say eighty to fifty to a hundred. A quality knife, sixty to eighty dollars. At some kind of light, eighty dollars. A quality belt, don't be cheap with the belt, another eighty dollars. And all the ammunition, self defense ammunition, thirty bucks. And I mean, if you really wanted to cut it down, you could cut a few things out of there. But uh, really, I think all of that's pretty reasonable. All of that totals seven hundred and forty dollars. For the exception of the Walther PPK he put on that table, every single one of those guns would completely outfit you. Everything but your shoes, socks, underwear, pants, and shirt that you already have. <laughs> it completely outfits you, including and the ammo. pay for a class. Yeah, I. I but yet, he has how many different followers and people watch him and take his ad- advice on guns? I'm like, you know, that, that that's an interesting thing. I was reading Matt Jaquies of Victory First the other day on his Facebook thing, and he was talking about another sensational YouTube star that really doesn't say anything that we would espouse. And again, I don't dislike. I don't dislike these people. Understand? I watch their stuff. Uh, I, don't, I don't really uh, – YouTube's not my thing. I don't do a lot of the, the subscribe and following thing. So I, I don't really do that. But I, I look and see what they got going on, and I like to kind of follow and see what's going on. And, and you know, is that something I'm interested in or whatever? Uh, none of these guys are saying what we're saying. And maybe that's why they're really famous. I, I don't know um, because they do all these things with all these different guns, and that's that's neat. Um, but 740 bucks. I mean, all in, that's – that's if you are like naked right now, no gun, no or no ammo, nothing. That's naked. Walk in for under a grand, you can walk out fully kitted, ready to go, uh, like a CCW starter kit uh, of good quality, uh, of good of good quality, and you could literally walk into a gun store or a tactical store of your choice, not have any anything to go off of walk out under a grand and be good to hook and, and be ready to get it on as soon as you step down. There's a lot to that. Now, I am not one of these people who thinks less money is better uh, because there's a lot of stuff that's cheaper than what we recommend, but it's not reliable. It's just, it's not, the, there's no value for your dollar there. Uh, and there's even some things you don't really have to have. I mean, I, I, I haven't carried a knife in my pocket every day for since I was in the army. So 10 years plus. So well, when I was on the road, I did when I was on the road, I did back, but back up when you talk about money, we're not talking about a lot of money though. These people that talk about these guns that are literally instead of $400 are like three fifty, or yeah. maybe two ninety nine. If you get some use Smith and Wesson Sigma, let's not even talk about high points or whatever. That's just outrageous. For Real $199. Quick, speaking of the, speaking of the, of the Sigma, I want to get a hold of one of those SWVE9s. You know the one I'm talking about? I think you got I one have, for her. Yeah, I have one that she, I, she bought for herself, and now it's sitting over at my safe. I haven't got rid of it. I, I, I kind of want to pick one up and just burn it down and see what happens. Yeah. Well, that, but see, that one's 300 bucks or three or 350 Yeah, uh, I don't want one that bad. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but I'm saying it's not that a lot of money. We're talking about 50 to $100 difference. And and somehow I'm unreasonable to say maybe you should buy the Glock for five twenty five retail instead of the whatever Ruger for four four fifty. And I'm an I'm a snobby jerk <laughs> to recommend something that costs fifty dollars to maybe a hundred dollars more that well, I let's be honest. But who is paying retail for anything? Yeah. In twenty sixteen. Come on. But but what I'm saying is the people that are all this so price conscious about this gun that well it's only two ninety nine, in the grand scheme of things of all the gun ammo and support equipment it's like a hundred to one hundred and fifty dollar difference maybe, sometimes it's you just know, people will squabble over fifty bucks. Well, should I get this used Glock? It's like fifty dollars cheaper. It's fifty bucks. Seriously. So so let me tell you real quick kind of a story about that. Yeah. I was out looking for this car for for Slappy, who wrecked my truck. And I found a nice, like, I don't know, 1999 Geo Prism, I think it was, or Chevy Prism. Had like 145,000 miles. 
some lady had owned it its entire life. She wanted fourteen hundred bucks. I went. We checked it out. Great car. Great car. Uh, absolutely flawless mechanically. Uh, had some minor issues. You know, it's a however your six seventeen year old car. But overall, great car. Like an asshole, I didn't offer her fourteen hundred dollars. I offered her twelve. I said, "I'll give you twelve hundred bucks." She said, "Ah, eh, I've got a few more appointments." Let me say, I said, "Okay, standing offer, no big deal." This was like Saturday. I said, "Standing offer. If you don't, if you don't get any 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 bites in your appointments today, let me know. I'll come back and get cash money." Swear to God, like four hours later, I get a text: "Hey, the car sold." I'm like, damn it. So trying to save money, I screwed myself out of a good little deal. So then I have to spend the whole next day running around looking for a car. <laughs> I finally find one, which we ended up buying, but I ended up spending like 1600 bucks by the time it was all done. I, I cost myself money and got a, <laughs> not as good a car, not as good a deal. You see what I'm saying? So sometimes. Sometimes you got to bite the bullet, and that's kind of the, the the same point there. Uh, but uh, how am I being unreasonable to recommend spend five hundred versus four hundred? And there's people out here that are recommending spending thousands. Well, here here's the thing. I could I can say this. There's a direct correlation. The people who are going to argue and guffaw over fifty or a hundred bucks in this case are the same dudes who have like four guns on them all the time, seventeen knives. Um, you know, they got like 16 bug out bags, one in their car, one on them, one in their old lady's car, one in their kid's car, one their kid takes to school. Again, not, not bad people, but they're the, those are the, that kind of people. And I don't, I'm not saying that's bad. I'm just saying, you know what I mean? I think it's, 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 it's almost extreme. It's, it's like Walter Mitty shit. It's the same kind of people who will espouse the high point of, of a high, uh, espouse the, the greatness of a high point carbine are the same people that I'm like. You know, bro, do you even operate? You know what I mean? <laughs> Not, do you ever like, shoot the me? gun you claim that? I've had people came over, whole family, dad, uh, grandfather, a dad, and the son. I mean, three generations. They all three had high points. All of them had malfunctions. I'm and like, they were all shocked. I'm like, oh, this thing normally <laughs> big oh, old bone anchors. Deal. Yeah, we bought them all for like hundred bucks. <laughs> I digress. Moving on. Let's just yeah. Yeah. let's paint a picture here. The internet kills me sometimes. Let's paint a picture. All this hardware that this gentleman laid down on the table. Six thousand dollars worth of guns. So I think, what could I do with six thousand dollars? I could go somewhere and probably take a two day course, a basic one for about five hundred bucks. Five hundred to a thousand. There's simple ones around your town, taught by average level dudes. You, I think you can go to Vickers for five hundred bucks for two days. I mean, that's high. That's that's a good course. Yeah, you can see anywhere somewhere about a hundred dollars a day up to maybe four or five hundred dollars a day, but average, whatever. You can buy a thousand a thousand rounds of nine millimeter for two hundred dollars. That's a cheap surplus shoot outside stuff. If you want to buy, you know, range safe ammo, maybe two fifty. Okay. You can go buy a steel target, ready ship targets, for example, has a target that will ship to you in a flat rate box for a hundred and don't quote me, but I think it's forty five hundred and seventy five dollars. All you tax strikes got the same kind of thing. Tax strike right has something like that too, but two, so I put two hundred dollars. I didn't want to be, you know, favoring any one steel manufacturer or the other, um, but two hundred dollars will buy you a decent sized steel target stand, and uh, boom, easy done. Nine hundred dollars. Yeah, quarter scale, quarter scale steel target from Tax Strike, hundred fifty bucks. Yeah. Um, so you could do this right here after you buy your gun, of course, for five hundred dollars, whatever. Uh, you could do this every like quarterly, every two months. You could do this. You could add a target to your personal range. You could buy a thousand rounds to shoot at home and shoot the class and take a class. Or any variation of it. You could do this six times. <laughs> uh, well, you could do it. Uh, you could do it six times, 
and still have your initial buy-in damn near. Yeah. So what did we say it was seven forty? You'd have six hundred bucks left over if you did it six times. Yeah. So and of course this is all numbers can move left or right, but it's just the point that I don't care who you are, how bad. And this guy's saying, well, I picked the, the Chiapo Rhino because I shoot it so well. Can you imagine how well you would shoot a Glock? There's no, there's no way that dude is shooting that Rhino. Anyway, and I suck at shooting. There's no way he's shooting that gun as good as I'm shooting a Glock 17. Period. The end. Can you imagine how good of an, av- an average shooter, an average person, starting from, let's start from square one, from zero, to for the next 12 months and invest six thousand dollars you imagine how much experience networking um improvement perspective different trainers across the nation of course you throw in a little travel in there okay maybe you go to three classes a year for whatever left or right but just them that amount of money to spend just solely on guns how much improvement you can actually make how i mean i I just don't get it. And I don't know why this isn't logical, why this doesn't make sense to people. Um, I, I don't know. But they just they just go buy another gun. It's like the guys that I shot around tonight. The guy was talking about, oh, this gun, that gun. I'm like, this is the gun I carry. Look, if you look at the slide, it's all rusted up on the side <laughs> because it sits against my love handles for the last, I don't know, eight years. That's what wow. I shoot. I don't have time to, why do I want to go buy a race gun or something? I don't carry that race gun every day. I carry a Glock 26. So I shoot that Glock 26. And just so everybody's aware, we're not against have. I'm not against having a race gun. If that's what you want to do, knock yourself out. I've had them. I'm not against it at all. I'm not against having a wide variety. I am saying, or we are saying, that for us and what we kind of, I don't know, preach... I don't even know if that's teach. I don't know if that's, you know, what we talk about is generally based on a good, solid foundation, fundamental foundation of gear, equipment, firearm, ammo, training. You can have all the other stuff, but that is in addition to, not in lieu of. That's an additional thing. That's an extra kind of thing, in our in our opinion. Yeah. that's That's really where we're getting at. And I, I like to give advice that literally this dude comes to me, hey, I've got $500 to spend. i got X amount of dollars, a couple of paychecks to save up and buy a gun, my first gun. I want to give him a good advice that he could take that. If the, the zombies come tomorrow, he's got a gun he can trust his life with. Whatever you want to put your own little, you know, hypothetical situation. I, I want to give him good, solid advice that's uh, that doesn't cost him 20 paychecks. <laughs> Anyways... Moving on, I guess. But that's 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 really the point. Nothing new there. Uh, we're going to get into some day one SHOT Show coverage. Day one of SHOT Show going on right now in Las Vegas. This is live footage. Everyone's just standing very still. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, this is not everything going on at SHOT. Like I said, it's only been going on about two days now. You had a little pre-gaming going on with some of the manufacturers teasing some stuff. You did have your range day Monday, and then yesterday you had a full day of it. So uh, a lot of the stuff is trickling in through various sources. And we've kind of... Is today today Tuesday? uh, Yeah, today's Tuesday. Yeah. So it'll go on till uh, Thursday or Friday, I think. It's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? Yeah, so today's the first day, like I said. Yeah, first day. Slappy. Well, no, they had the industry range day yesterday. Okay. So most of the stuff has been out there, and they put hands on, and they had set up on Sunday. There was a couple people, I'm not sure if they were supposed to, shooting video on Sunday during setup, getting an, a little sneak peek on stuff. But uh, you know, I've been to Shot Show a few times, and uh, it's it's amazing the 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 scale of it. Really, you cannot understand. But you should understand that Shot Show is not a gun show for you to go to. It's it's not really that kind of deal. It is an industry show where a lot of business gets done, and that's the primary goal of the show. It's not to go and and try and get free stuff or, or whatever. It's not for the everyday common person. It is an industry show for them to make their yearly sales, basically. You go to the show as a retailer. 
and you say, hey, you go to the vendor, I want to buy X amount of these, et cetera, et cetera. And that's that's what it's there for. So just understand it's it's not a gun show where you can go buy anything or anything like that. It is there for vendors to display their products, their new wares, and things like that to retailers so that the retailers can go and make their orders and, and see what's going on. That's that's really what it's for. And if I was gonna recommend something, I would say if you want to go to a show, the NRA show is consumer focused. It is a much better venue for the actual individual consumer instead of trying to picky tail or sneak into shot show. Um, there are other shows out there specifically NRA is the first one that comes to mind. Yeah, is, NRA is a good show. That is focused on that. and I've heard that come from not just one or two, but multiple people that that are in the industry that go to various shows, most of them recommend the NRA show for the average consumer. It's more focused for them, and it's it's a better show. But I digress. Oh, thank goodness. Caracal has rescued us. I know we've been screaming at Glock for years and years to make us a carbine because we just have to have a, a pistol caliber carbine, and Caracal has beat Glock and answered our prayers. With the CC10. Yeah. yeah. And then, so, Caracal, they're, uh, where's Caracal from? Are they the uh, Mideastern uh, company? I believe so. Yeah. So, I don't know who's been screaming at Glock to make a carbine. I don't know why they would. The internet. The entire internet. Oh, okay, roger that. <laughs> so, listen, I, this is this looks like a really cool gun. Looks, you know, really cool. I'm sure it's going to be a great plinker for somebody. Uh, at the end of the day, pistol ammo really isn't good at killing people, even if you put it out of a carbine. So, I don't know. I don't know why. Why would I fool with that? I, okay, there's there's some very specialized times where I may want to do that, but for the vast majority of the time, why would I fool with that when I can get an SBR? Yeah. Which that is an SBR, isn't it? Uh, it looks pretty close to me. Uh, Overall length, maybe I don't know. It's yeah. certainly not a six. It's not a sixteen-inch barrel. No, it isn't. Yeah, it's an SBR, for sure. Yeah. So moving on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Speaking it's cool. of which, EOTech. Um, yeah, if you have an EOTech, send it back. I thought I've said that before. Uh, I don't know. No, 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 no. Serious, serious business. Serious business. EOTech has some some issues, I, and I've been an EO guy for a long time. Uh, shot them when they were Bushnell Hollow sites. Still, I've always liked the reticle, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, took me several times of kind of getting screwed because the EOTech sucks, and but going to the aim point, uh, they've got a buyback program. I think you basically get um, credit store credit, basically, which is kind of like man, why bother? <laughs> but they, they've had some issues. They've had some issues with the contract for SOCOM, et cetera, et cetera. You guys can do the Google research on that and and see what we're talking about. Maybe Justin will put the link on. Uh, I don't know if we've talked about it before. But, yeah, so you might want to look at an aim point. Not really particularly an aim point fanboy, uh, but you really it's hard to go wrong with a T1 or T2. Yes. Or T3. What are they, what's out now? Is the oh, T3 out know. now? I don't even know. It's even smaller, better, better than the T. <laughs> something I, I don't. At this I point, they, they've done so good with it. It's very incremental improvements they're making now. They go, okay, now it's a two and a half MOA dot versus a four. It's like they just give you more options. They're not really groundbreaking. They're just okay. We get instead of ten thousand bar, fifty thousand hours of battery life. Now you have sixty thousand. There. And I'll tell you, I was dude. I was a I was a late adopter. I mean, I've had an, I've had aim points for a long time, but I. Uh, I held out. I, I I flew the EO flag for a long time, and uh, turns out I was wrong. So I'm okay to say that. I think you can do it, but realize it's going to be more finicky. You're going to have to carry spare batteries. You're going to have to check it. I used one. You may have a minor wandering issue, a zero <laughs> issue. <laughs> and to their credit, I mean, the biggest. They have a delamination issue. My issue with. with Glass. The shift is well. I've never heard of the delamination being. I never witnessed anything like that. But my problem is they seem to have known that or should have known that, and didn't do anything about it. It has the appearance of them going, "Oh, 
are made the primary guts of our creation and invention here is suck. is affected by temperature changes. And I wouldn't say suck. They said yeah, that's a, a strong neg- word. I apologize. A negative forty degrees to a, if you zeroed it at a negative forty degrees and then went out to the desert and it's one hundred and twenty, you could see a shift of five minutes of angle. Well, no, no, no. There, that, that's that's a big issue. The other big issue is the 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 reticle not tracking properly. That that's a huge issue. Uh, we've seen several of those that have that issue at, when at, you're at, to zero? at the office. Yeah, it doesn't move right. Oh, yeah, you go like 10 clicks, and it moves it an inch on the paper, and then you shoot again, you move it five clicks, which should be a half difference, and it goes even further. It doesn't move at all. Or Right, yeah. It's, yeah. yeah, they're a pain so to they, zero. They've, they've got some issues. Um, and if you like EO, man, shoot them. You know, I'm just telling you, I think you could, with all the evidence, yeah. it, when, the, when the Army says, hey, take your crap back, <laughs> that's, that's what we call, again, we call it a clue. I don't know if I'm going to send my back or not. I haven't decided. I only have one. Well, and if you haven't had a problem with it, roll with it. But I'm also not pushing that levels of... I love the reticle. That's why I picked it initially. My first trip to the desert, the Army, they purchased... It was 50-50, some EOTex and some M68s. The first time I looked at them, I'm like, eh. I looked at the 68, it had a kill flash on it. I was like, this sucks. It looks like I'm looking through a picket... I mean, a, a chain leak fence. And I saw the <laughs> EOTech is just crystal clear. And I'm like, this is great. So I picked the EOTech. And then I just had that particular EOTech almost my entire career. And then when I went to 82nd and went to Afghanistan, I was like, everybody had ACOGs, ACOGs, ACOGs. I was like, oh, somebody should have a dot site. <laughs> I mean, we don't all need EO, a, or ACOGs, do we? And I was like the one dude that had a uh, a red dot site, and I had an EOTech or something. Or, yeah, EOTech, and I used it. And then I also put an EOTech on a saw. And a 240 at, at different times throughout. And I always used them, but I always checked them, changed the batteries regularly. I mean, in retrospect, I, a de- decent 68 would have probably served me better. But I just love that heads up display and that laser and that tiny little dot. And I had good luck with them, but I also didn't probably push them as hard or as p- demand near the precision that those other units did. But. You know, I've I've the only one I ever had a problem with was the double A battery. What is it, the five five two Rev F or five twelve Rev F? Shut off in the bottom. Yeah. Yeah, that's the only my my only personal issues. But uh, a lot of folks who've got a lot more time on these things than I do. Uh, you know, when when a guy who uh, a friend of mine who is in a very in, in a, he's a special guy, and he says, "Yeah, I, I love that. It's good for." leads on moving cars and this that and the other he said, i love that he said but i also don't have to support it if i break it i walk into the arms room i get a new one uh you know so something to to kind of but be, be that, considered of that being said aim points on all my go-to rifles at this moment right now my ar has an aim point and my ak has an aim point so the eotech is in the top of the safe somewhere not mounted to any guns so that being said yeah. mine too on the you got, you got to my work car right now it's got a t1 <laughs> And, oh, we move on to the revelation. Thank you, Kimber. The masses have been screaming and pleased and praying to make us another short snub nose 357 revolver. <laughs> what is wrong with the world? <laughs> Why on earth did Kimber think that we needed more revolvers? I mean... Yeah. Oh, well, but it's, you know, it's he... user-servable sites. You can, you can change the sites. Oh. Okay, well, That's I'm sold. Nice. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> so, yeah, here's the thing. So, uh, it, it's cool. It's a cool gun. Uh, I, I don't know. What's it go for? What'd you say? What did we, we figure out it goes it for? About, about, it's going to probably be about $7,800. Yeah, yeah. So, like another high-dollar gun. But, uh, Kimbers don't have really good luck out of their 1911s. So, why do I want a revolver from them? Especially, Just saying. it's 20 ounces empty. Guess what else is about 20 ounces empty? Glock 17. Oh, a little more than that, but a Glock 26 is 21 ounces empty. And you have a gun that holds twice as many rounds. <laughs> but whatever. I, I think it also has user serviceable sights. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but not near the fit and finish and polish. Listen, I, I, listen, Kimmer makes a really nice gun. They, sometimes they need work... Uh, 
And, and this is a, this is a cool ass revolver. Don't get me wrong. I just not for me. I don't think. I just don't know. See where the the industry needs this, where there's a a consumer base for this. I don't get it. But anyway, oh, there's got to be. Otherwise, they wouldn't have made it. Rest assured. Well, I hope. I hope. Oh, this is going to be a love hate right here. Uh, uh, yeah, Brita M nine A three. I I would I would kind of want gun. one. I kind of I would one. own that gun in a heartbeat. Uh, again, if we're taking donations, <laughs> because it's going to retail for eight hundred. It's retail eight hundred to a thousand dollars. Yeah, I I would own one of those. I you know I like the M nine. I know it's not the it's not the greatest. It's certainly not a Glock. Well, let's be honest. Do we like but it, it is, the same way? Is, that, that. Do we like it for the same reason the guys that were in back in the day before us like the nineteen eleven? Because it's what we hey, the, now, cut our teeth there on. Some nostalgia, but I shoot the piss out of that gun. I shoot that gun pretty well, probably in spite of myself. I can't imagine having a custom one or like a Wilson one. I can't imagine. Uh, I, I would have one in a heartbeat. I just I, I can't see spending that kind of money. Just doesn't make any sense to me. And let's not forget how big and heavy they are. Or not big, but just heavy versus like a full size. And and they've got they've got locking block issues. They've got frame and slide issues. They've got magazine issues. It is what it is. I get it, but I I own one of those. Yeah, I think the new model with a quality magazine, I think would would run just about with with most things out there. But good luck finding a holster for it. Well, I told my local uh, my local pusher <laughs> the pusher be in the gun store i said hey when you get one of those in call me uh, i'm interested and he called me like literally two days ago he's like hey, or yesterday he's like hey uh i got an m9a3 in and i was like yeah so we talked and he, he gave me a number and i was like yeah i don't you know i don't really want to do that right now and he said it's okay he said, he said i'm buying one for myself so i'll let you shoot this one before you buy one i said ah we're good so maybe i'll do a review on one but uh Definitely, they're they're nice. Uh, like I said, it's I don't know why I spend a thousand bucks on that when I can spend five hundred on what I got. I guess the biggest part of this show is Casey and Justin don't have that much disposable income to play with thousand dollar guns. Now, now that could be true. You know, we used to though. I've I've had them all, man. I've had well, and I actually I had ah oh, <laughs> I picked up a Beretta ninety two FS. I mean, recently, like within the last six months. I don't remember what I traded for it. Glock 19, maybe? I don't know. So I picked up a Beretta 92 FS, and promptly, within, I mean, gosh, a couple months. I, don't, I, I only shot it a few times and set in the safe. Promptly traded it to a buddy of mine for a Glock 22. The, you, you'll see that... Uh, our circle, the circle that I run in around here, we're horse trading guns all the time. So I've probably had in the last, I don't know, eight years, 30 guns. And I, I still think my initial buy-in was like a Glock 19. Like the, the shit just keeps getting passed around. But uh, Obama's going to make you register with the ATF as a dealer. I've not made any, not made any money. And I'm not uh, in the business. Of course, that could be. There's a, there's going to have to be something that they, it's going to be a test as we discussed recently, but, uh, I, no, I don't think so, but, uh, yeah, we're always trading guns back and forth, so. And I know you've been waiting for this development with your breath, holding your breath. New Order Firearms releases the N09 pistol. Never heard of her. (laughs) I have no idea. But I put this up there because there's a lot of new entries into the guns. Most of them are imported from foreign countries under different names, or I think Poland, some Polish company, Romad or Romad, or I'm going to mess up their name. I think Roma. You remember? You remember the um, the video that Vickers did a while back? He was uh, he was training with the Russian Spetsnaz or whatever. And everybody was losing their shit because, oh, my God, they're shooting around <laughs> him. You, you remember the one? Oh, yeah. Like, Here we go, maybe? Yeah. I want to know what that pistol is. I thought I it was want a Caracal. One. Ah, I don't think. I think it was a Russian pistol. I don't remember. A Russian Glock clone. Hmm. Uh, it has lower bore axis. You remember the one? Come on, we talked about it not too long ago. Strike one? I, I, don't, I, I don't know. But whenever that one comes in, I wanna, I'll, I'll probably yeah, buy one. I, the, the, the Caracal, and I think the Strike 1, our Arsenal's imported one or something, I think is pretty low bore. But I, 
aside from if a anybody few knows gun the reviewers that, shooting it, I don't know if, much about them. If anybody knows the one that was on the Vickers video that I'm talking about, you all know the Vickers video I'm talking about. Come on. Um, it's an insane Russian drill or crazy Russian drill is what brought it up. Just put a, put a link in the show. Um, if you guys any, any of you guys know what that is, let me know. I, I don't think you can get it in America, but if you can, let me know. Now, I'm not going to spend $1,000 on it because that's just ignorant, but... While you're doing that, let's talk about the Silencer Co. Maxim 9. This is a pretty cool gun. It is Silencer Co.'s integrally suppressed 9mm. Uh, looks like it's taken Glock mags now, is that right? Mm-hmm. That's the change. Initially, they uh, were running M&P magazines. That's right. But, uh, yes. So, I don't know if they're really going to make it or not, but maybe they will. Maybe they will. I don't know. Silencer Co. is the same outfit that did the uh, shotgun. Yes, they make... The silent shotgun, right? To, to, yes. To, to Silencer Co.'s credit, they really have been innovating the last few years with a shotgun suppressor, um, their Omega suppressor, which is only about 17 ounces but it's uh, you can use everything from 338, 308, 556. Um, it's not too long, decent weight, and it, it's it's one that actually has decent suppression, uh, sound decibel ratings across all those different platforms. Because for a while there, you either if you really wanted 556, you had to get one that was dedicated to 556 to get it down to about 135 below that pain threshold. Or if you wanted 308, you got a 308 cam. But if you started switching around, you would start to lose um, your decibel rating stuff. But um, let's see here. So moving on here, one thing that we we pretty much knew this was coming. Glock released their MOS versions of the 19 and 17. So a little easier for, for uh, people to experiment with red dots without having to send their guns off for hundreds of dollars and milling and warranty about um, ruining their warranty so this is not really crazy but um, expected from Glock so a nice touch yeah it, and it goes along with the introductions they had last year on their practical tactical guns wasn't it yeah they init initially it was 35 34 and that new 10 millimeter the 40 I believe that they offered it on so it's a logical progression just to add it to it and I like how they do it. It's very clean and simple. You can have it on there. If you don't, there's a, a block off plate. And if you want to put a red dot, put a red dot. So very, uh, uh, it's, it's a good idea. That's where the industry's going, I think. So, oh, Absolutely. And, and I'll tell you where I think that, that shines is on the 19 size gun. It's even the 17 size gun, don't get me wrong. But I think if I was going to build one, or if I was going to build one, if I was going to buy one, it would be a Glock 19 size. Why is that? And I hate, I hate that size because it's small, and it just makes the most sense to me. You get the shortest sight radius. It's, it's, it's just a small gun, and I think you, I think you benefit more from the red dot there. Uh, I like it on the 17, but I've, you know, I've shot a 17 sighted for so long that. Uh, so why wouldn't you do it on 26 then? A 26 would be fine too, probably. I don't know if the uh, might be kind of goofy looking, but. <laughs> and I, I don't really like the 26 size, the the hand size. I think the about the smallest you should you can go. In my opinion, is is the is the 19. And once you get over the fact that your pinky floats, if you can get beyond that little issue, uh, it's not really that big of a deal. Um, I do know that back in the day there was talk of uh, certain teams um, working overseas that did a lot of training with the 26 um, for concealed work it was a gun they went to a lot for that and they they looked at having red dots because they wanted kind of that one gun to do everything uh concealment but yet be able to take those longer shots so but anyways so not really anything crazy expect that from glock now i put this on this this job of the hut looking dude um primarily because let's let's be honest it looks cool <laughs> <laughs> but this guy's got Level three armor all over him, including his face and shoulders, and it just looks cool. That's part of the shot show thing is make sure you look cool. And that's uh, actual armor. Yes. Yeah. So it's like a plate carrier to the max, pieces all over the place. It's kind of neat. 
Oh, moving on, Magpul. Oh, Magpul, I think they have finally reached their limits. They released a 21 and 27 round Glock 9mm magazine and some new AK magazines for the AK-74 and a 20 round magazine for the uh, 762 by 39 version. Now, Casey and I have something to say about Glock magazines. Um, mine's short, so I'll tell you, I have my, I've used it finally for the first time tonight at competition. Guess what the only malfunction I had today was with that magazine. I don't know why. Of course, the fire started the shooting about halfway through the magazine. It locked back to the rear like it was unloaded. Um, unfortunately, I didn't stop to check to see what was really going on because literally it locked back. It's like, that's strange. Dropped the magazine, inserted a new one, and went, kept on shooting. Went back at the end of the match. There was the Glock or the Magpul magazine. With the, It was about half full. So I don't know if that caused a malfunction, but I'm starting now. I need to be kind of suspicious about it. But Casey alluded to some problems he was having before the show. Yeah, I can't say for certain what the issue is. Uh, I've got three of them in the, I, what are they, 17 size? Mm -hmm. I've got three of them, and th I mean, they're fine. They, they just don't work that well for me. Uh, I don't know what the issue was. that The gun I was shooting them in had probably a lot of things going against it that could be an issue. Uh, for instance, it was a Glock 22 with a KKM 9mm uh, conversion barrel. Uh, so there could be an issue there. I get that, but that gun ran fine with stock mags choked with the mag pull mags and just looking at them, the geometry doesn't appear to be the same to me. I'm not a mathematician. I don't know. Or an engineer. <laughs> yeah, but looking at them, they don't look the same. So I, I don't know why. Uh, and, and and I think there's been some, been some minor issues with them. I think some people they run like scalded dogs for, other people they don't. Uh, it, you know, so just test your stuff. Now, Magpul. To be fair, I've not talked to anybody at Magpul. I've not raised hell about it because I fully understand that it could be an issue with the gun I was running them in. Uh, I know other people have gotten on their Facebook page and ended up with, you know, a case of new ones basically. So they're very responsive. They want to know what's going on. Uh, I just don't care that much. I think when you release a product, you should be good to go. So, and for what I got in them, they're they're good training mags. So, yeah, I'm uh, not carrying them. I'm not carrying them on me anytime soon until I've I ran them enough to to trust them. But and, and there's any number of there's again there's any number of things. I'm not saying it's a bad product. Uh, for now, for me, I'm running Glock mags. And and now let's to be frank. Glock has gone through probably 13 iterations of the follower. So these things change. There's any, a gun is a big moving part. Uh, just make damn sure what you're using works and works well. That, that, that'd be my caveat. And two more things. CMMG released their mutant, I believe last year. So they released a few new versions. They have a pistol version an SBR version, and a crink-style version with a one-chamber uh, break similar to a, a, an AK, which uh, pinned and welded meets the minimum requirements. So you can have that little compressor uh, compensator on the front right at your minimum 16 inches length. And they make a pistol version with, I believe, a 7 or 8-inch barrel with one of those attached. So why I think this is significant CMMG, um, they're not Bravo Company by any means. They're not Colt. I've had one of their guns and had no issues with it. I don't own it now. I would. I don't want to rate them as a manufacturer because I don't know if I'm that plugged into the industry to do it. But it seems that they're really stepping it up, specifically with this this one iteration right here. And this is not an AR-15 that's been shimmed or trimmed to accommodate the 7.62 or an AK magazines, and it's not an AR-10 that shoots 308s that's brought down. It is a newly designed gun from the top to bottom that's right in the middle, designed to shoot the AK 762 by 39 round using AK magazines. It's 
I think it's got a lot of legs, primarily because it feeds from the most pro- prolific magazine and most prolific round in the world. And let's also say that it also is very comparable to a 300 blackout for pennies. I mean, massive amount of difference in cost. So should this be your go-to gun before an AK or an AR? No, but I really think they're onto something with the, with the Mutant. That's what they um, commonly call it, the Mark 47. I really think they're onto something. But yeah, I, I think it's pretty cool. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what the cost is. What'd you say, a thousand bucks? Right about a thousand. I think they might start at some end at nine ninety nine, eight ninety nine, and their SBR variants up to about twelve or thirteen. But nothing extreme. Not ultra cheap. Not ultra expensive. Right about in the middle. What you expect for a quality AR or AK? About a thousand dollars. I'm interested to see how they go. Uh, I, th- I think it's kind of neat. Seven six two by thirty nine. You know, the first AR I ever had was a seven six two by thirty nine Colt. Uh, that I traded for a couple of AKs back in the day. So I think it's kind of neat. But uh, anyway, so moving on, I think that uh, that's something that we should we should look at and uh, be paying attention to in the future. There's plenty of things on the, on the Internet that you can do research on, and uh, Justin will have some links in there for you. Uh, but for me, it's a little too early to tell. Yeah, but I, I just like the fact that it uses a round that's already out there and I mean, I li- don't get me wrong. I really like 300 Blackout, but I can't afford to shoot it. And I think this is a, a better better solution for it now. And uh, Casey, when you're texting me, it's showing up on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> so I know Casey's telling me to hurry up because he wants to get to the last thing from SHOT Show because he's super excited that Taurus – the wonderful manufacturer known as Taurus, has not only invented uh, a wonderful little 380 pistol, sarcasm, He's it's also added wings. So all those people that needed the added protection to their little 380 pistol, this might be a 9 mil, I don't know, they've added wings for your comfort and protection. Yeah, I, I don't... I, 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 was there any information in the, in the release about that? Because the only thing I can think of is that it's for somebody to help them rack the gun. It is, it is. They, and if... If you can't rack the gun, you know, the world needs bread bakers too. Maybe CCW is not for you. It's to help people charge the weapon and, and all that stuff. And there's been a few products that have came out that you can attach or a block you put over the front of it and some other stuff. But uh, one, I would never buy Taurus. Not anytime soon. I'm um, sorry, Taurus. You've just had too many problems. And I don't see what they offer that other people don't do as well or better. Comparable price points. I don't know. I I, I want to totally hate it, but then again, I'm thinking, well, there's some females out there that I know have had trouble with this gun or that, or they get the this version because it's easy for them to charge the sliding. I mean, charge it. But I'm kind of with you. If if this is something that's going to be even a, a moderate priority on your list for your personal defense, maybe it's time to hit the gym a little bit. Maybe it's time to – I don't think it's necessarily unreasonable. You're going to practice with the gun to, to maintain or establish some modicum of proficiency. Maybe that also includes developing a little bit of dexterity and hand strength to be able to operate a basic firearm without wings. Yeah, maybe I just, that I'm asking it, it too seems, much. It seems really gimmicky to me. Yeah, and I don't know. That, that, I don't think Taurus is the most highly regarded manufacturer out there. Uh, I'm sure there's a need. There's a reason they did it. Uh, I just think that it's very gimmicky, and it's probably not very necessary at the end of the day. Those are my thoughts. Yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> it's just kind of funny, but. Uh... I guess that's about it. We've covered some a lot of bad advice, some ways to waste your money, and some new things to the industry. And so far, nothing really coming out that's earth-shattering, groundbreaking. Most of the stuff we could probably agree that we like are just incremental improvements to pre-existing things that were already good, like the Glock or... Um, 
adding in some more features or offering something like for the military pistol contract with the Beretta, you know, M9A3. So not really anything earth shattering that's coming out of the show. So I don't know. We'll stay tuned for the next couple of days and see, but that's about all we got of note. Yeah, I, I would agree. I think there's going to be there's there's going to be stuff that comes out. I think it's kind of neat, but at the end of the day, nothing earth shattering, as Justin said. Um, ultimately, at the end of the day, spend your money right, buy right, cry once, and have an eighty to ninety percent solution. Not against having really nice guns and oddball stuff, but I think you should be very proficient with your everyday carry, which should be one of a very few pistols that we recommend. So, Justin, anything else before we take it on to the house? I think we've laid on as much as we can for one episode. <laughs> Indeed. Folks, don't forget to check us out on the Facebook. We have a Facebook page. We do not have a private group. I've gotten like two messages asking for an invitation to the private group. We don't have one. I don't know where that came from. I'm sorry if I've confused you. There is but one public page for the Practical Tactical Podcast, and that's facebook.com slash practical tactical podcast and that's it there is no other group as yet um so don't really know where the confusion came from uh, we love to hear your feedback you can hit us there at facebook or email us at feedback at practical tactical podcast.com that's feedback at practical tactical podcast.com we read each and every email and we respond to each and every email we respond to every message uh, on Facebook, maybe not on the public side, but certainly if you send us a message, we will respond to that. Usually it's me, sometimes it's Justin. And other than that, that's really it. We'd love to hear what you want. Uh, if there's anything you want to see, you want us to talk about, let us know. Um, hit us with the feedback. Until next time, train hard, be safe, keep your head on a swivel, and shoot straight. Take care. <laughs>